Okay, so on our farm, we have several species of animals. Um, we have cows, chickens, honey. Picking up chicks. Picking up chicks. Goats, sheep. And they're happy and they got their tummies full. Uh, pigs. And dogs. I think that, if, oh, we have some ducks. And I think that about rounds it out. But what, uh, what I'm here to explain is why do we have all these animals? Do we just like run around taking care of animals for fun? Are we weird animal hoarders? Never know. Uh, no. In reality, and it's very important to me, on our farm, all of our animals, they serve a purpose. Um, from the milk cows right down to the dogs. Um, so let me explain to you what we're doing with these animals and the purpose that we hope they serve. I think everybody should have a family milk cow. Um, milk cow is the center of a homestead. Uh, everything centers around her and goes out from there. Okay, so the first animal you get is a cow. Let's just, let's just hypothetically. The her first animal you get is a cow. And with that cow, you get milk. And with that milk, you get dairy products. So. So now you've got this animal that's eating grass, so taking this grass on your farm that would just go to waste or you'd have to mow it or, you know, spend money managing it. You take this cow and she eats the grass. Um, and when she eats that grass, she converts it into milk. And milk can be used in so many different ways. Um, so first off, um, the cow usually has natural born calves. Or if you buy a cow in milk and she doesn't have a calf, you can always go find a bummer calf. I mean, they're plentiful. <laughs> hey, go sit. Okay, now go walk over there away from him. He'll follow you. Um, even around here, you know, um, you can go to any old dairy farm and they just discard the bull calves. You can go buy that calf and raise yourself a beef with that cow and say you don't want to milk twice a day. No big deal. You know how many cows I've grafted calves on? Maybe cows that don't want to take calves. It can be done. Just You just have to be more, more determined than the cow. Um, you just graft that calf onto the cow and eventually, even if it takes a month or two, the cow will get to the point where she lets that calf suck. Um, or nurse, we call it suck. We, she lets the calf nurse drink the milk. So, once you get to the point where the calf or calves, multiple calves, um, some cows can raise three or four calves, um, are drinking all of the milk, you can stop milking. Um, uh, we do that quite a bit. Pretty much that's our standard practice and has been. Even when we were dairy farming, we still let the cows stay on their moms. Because the cows always, dairy cows by nature give more milk than a cat can drink. Um, so, you've got the cow giving your family milk and now you've got the calf milking for you when you don't want to milk. Um, separate the calf for 12 hours and get milk. You know, milk the cow. Put the cow and calf back together. At this point, the calf is old enough. He should be fine. Going 12 hours without food, usually it's overnight and they sleep. Um, 
then, so you've got the cow raising a calf. Okay, what are you gonna do with this calf? If it's a bull, there's beef right there. It raise a beef every year. Um, if it's a heifer, you know, hold it back and raise it for another cow, for a backup cow, or, you know, sell it to another homesteader who needs a family milk cow. And, and you know, you can always diversify the cows. Okay. So, now you've got milk and beef from your milk cow. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, say you need to get some chickens because your garden is inundated with bugs and there's ticks all over your 68 acre farm that you just bought and your kids are covered in ticks and your dogs and your cows and your everything's covered in ticks. Um, go find some chickens. We brought home a stock trailer 20 foot stock trailer. Let me show you the trailer. This trailer right here. That trailer, we found a commercial chicken house that was cleaning out their um, chickens. And we filled that entire 20 foot stock trailer up with what was a 17 month old laying hens. I think it worked out to be 600 chickens. Um, it was awesome. That's how we got all these pretty ladies. We brought them home, and now they weren't in the best of shape because they were molting. And we brought them home, and we got them, you know, used to being, being on grass and eating. And anyways, we don't have ticks anymore. We don't have bugs. We don't have, we're not inundated with insects like we were when we bought this farm. So, huge bonus to chickens, they eat bugs. And the second huge bonus to chickens, if you've got a herd of cattle, um, they poop in the fields where they eat. And then you move them and you've got that manure. Well, if you've got 200 chickens running around your 68 acre farm, what's gonna happen to all that manure? These little buggers are gonna find it. And they are gonna spread it out. They're gonna dig through it. It's their nature to dig through. They look for leftover grains um, and bugs that, you know, take up residence in the manure. So, chickens are good for cleaning up manure, spreading it out, fertilize, helping to fertilize the fields. And they are also great for um, eating bugs. What's the third thing about chickens? And the number one thing about chickens? Why do we all have chickens? Eggs, right? And then we like to eat chickens, I guess that too. Okay, but how does a milk cow correlate with a chicken, right? Besides the fact that the, the chicken benefits the, the pastures and you know helps clean up the manure. Um, you can feed chickens clabber. Uh, not a lot of people seem to realize this, and I don't hear it a lot. So, okay, so clabber. You take milk, you put it in a bucket, you put a lid on it, you wait two days, it turns into like a, a yogurt-like substance. Fill it up. And I got some for the next day. And then you put the lid on it. Just like that. Just like that. And you set them right there. So, um, after it turns into this yogurt light substance, chickens love it. It is a whole food for chickens. Um, so you feed the chickens the clabber, which it's got you know, a lot of calcium and nutrients that chickens need. And I just let them forage. I don't buy chicken food. Um, I don't have to. Because my chickens don't need it. Look at them. They're beautiful. Um, so, that's, I mean, they do come in the milk barn and steal whatever grain falls on the ground, you know. But for the most part, I don't buy chicken food. I don't feed them. Their job is to clean up manure and we feed them milk and they do fantastic. Um, so, you can feed chickens clabbered milk. Okay, so that's how the cow is still supporting your family and taking care of your family. All right. Let's move on. What else does a cow do? What else, what other creature would you want? Would you like bacon? I love bacon. Um, pigs. Um, we have two mule-footed hogs. 
Um, I love mule-footed hogs. They're a smaller breed. Um, I think they mature about three, 400 pounds. Butcher, ours are usually 150 to 200 pounds. I like them closer to 200 pounds when we butcher them. So they're a small pig and their meat is absolutely amazing. And they're grazers. They love to graze. Um, they are also really good at turning up a garden. Ours just finished turning up our garden. Um, we're gonna, you know, disc it and rake it into rows. And we've got the garden ready by overwintering the pigs in the garden. Um, so, the clabber I was talking about, the milk clabber, uh, pigs also do very well on clabber. Uh, so yeah, you can raise pigs with the milk as well. Uh, so uh, you can have, you know, lots of milk cows and still find uses for all of that milk. I mean, I could. Okay, so now you've got milk and dairy products for your family. You've got beef you know, enough beef for your family. You have got chicken for your family and eggs. And you've got pork, bacon, you know, because that's really all anybody cares about anyways is the bacon, right? <laughs> um, so, as far as the bacon, yep, you've got that. All right, what else is a family milk cow good for? You know what I mean? Um, growing vegetables. Um, our garden, we just moved to this farm. A, it was a year, like a year and a half ago almost. Um, the garden plot, it has really low for, fertility. It's got, you know, the soil is really um, rocky, not the best, kind of clay. Um, manure. Uh, now our cows are on pasture, but every day they come in the milk barn. And they, you know, they leave their manure behind and we scrape it into a pile. And I've got a manure pile. And so what I do is I put that in my garden. We let it set for a year. So we put in a big pile, let it set for a year. And then when we plant the, the plants, we make a little row with just the, the composted manure. And the plants do fantastic. So here your milk cow is helping you grow a garden. You know, giving your, your soil fertility. Um, so, that is my take on a milk cow and why I think they're the best. Everybody should have one and they're definitely the center of a family homestead. So you've got milk, dairy products, you've got uh, eggs, chicken, pork, and vegetables all from this little milk cow and I mean one milk cow. You know you could probably raise one pig and a few chickens and a calf and still, if you have a good producing, one good producing milk cow, you could do all of this. Um, now, if, if you don't want to buy grain or have a, have a grass-fed milk cow, I strongly recommend finding a cow that has been bred for grass-fed genetics. Because I'd say 75% of dairy cows cannot milk without grain. They carry their fat internally and they need that high input of protein. It's not, not necessarily the grain, but it's the protein that makes these cows do well. While they're giving six or eight gallons of milk a day, they gotta have that protein. Um, if you wanna do grass fed and you wanna just buy any old dairy cow, alfalfa is the way to go. It's the way they've been bred for generations. A hundred years ago, we found riding on our barn. Uh, how much how much alfalfa he'd need per cow and it was all about alfalfa and how alfalfa was the center of his dairy farm and it, you know it really kind of struck home and we've always fed alfalfa um, um, now the goats and sheep I haven't gone there yet um, we have the goats and sheep for to aid in pasture management uh, so the sheep are primarily here for pasture management sheep and goats eat different species or varieties of grasses or weeds even um, than cows do. So what we're planning to do is we're gonna, we have our pit farm set up for rotational grazing. Um, we have seven paddocks that we can divide by two. So we can have 14 paddocks and we're gonna run the cows in, we'll let them graze off, you know, the top third of the grass. And then behind them, we're gonna run the sheep and the goats and they are going to come in and eat the rest of the weeds because um, I usually have to brush hog.
house. So my intention with this is um, maybe to get around brush hogging a little or some of that stuff that I would have brush hogged can go into production for the farm, you know, bringing in more revenue for the farm, whether it be milk, meat, or selling, you know, the offspring of the animals or anything along those lines. So that's the intention with the sheep, just adding another dimension to our farm. So yeah, it's kind of, um, kind of really cool. Oh, I didn't cover the dogs. Now, you guys have met Zion. She's our guardian dog and Lobo. They're guardian dogs. Um, that's what they're bred for. That's what they do. I mean, they're amazing. Um, these, these creations, that's just instinct. I mean, I never trained them. They just did it. Um, our corgis are here to help. We got them to help herd the cattle. But realistically, the corgis, um, we keep them around for the bulls because we have Jersey bulls. And when Jersey bulls, not all of them, but some Jersey bulls get old and they get ornery. So, so um, we keep them around for the Jersey bulls and to keep them in line. It's pretty nice when you have a bull that won't shy away from a human. But you stick your dog on him, say, go get the bull, and then you see that little tiny 20 pound corgi chase off this 600 pound bull. It's incredibly um, awesome. Just awesome. Um, especially when you worry about the safety of your children. You know, I've got a three year old, he helps us milk. And I don't want to even worry about the bull being in the same vicinity of, as us, so I say, hey, go get the bull. They chase him to the far corner, we bring the cows in, everything's fine, everybody's happy. You know, the bull has to walk off, you know. And so anyways, the corgis are amazing little dogs. Um, and they're gonna chase the chickens out of the barn if you want to. You can train them to do all kinds of neat stuff. But you always have to remember that an animal is limited by its breed and its instincts. So, you know, just like a cow is bred to eat grass, a dog, a corgi is bred to chase cows, and the Great Pyrenees is bred to guard your farm and your sheep and your cows, you know? So, anyways, that's this quick little video on why we have the animals we have and what our intention is with this farm. Um, I also wanted to talk just a quick bit about our food system and why we are here. Now, in my younger years, as I came to realize about food and everything, um, our food system's corrupted. There's no getting around it. There's no denying it's corrupted. Um, the, everything they put in your food is just not good for you. So, we, I feel it's very important to grow as much of our own food as possible. And I've seen the health benefits since we moved to the farm and since we started growing our own food. Um, we actually changed our entire lives to move here and do this. And it, I've also seen the benefit in my children and their attitudes on life and their respect for mother nature and pretty much the cycle of life, I mean. They've learned so much, you know, just learning about the world that we live in. And you know, the, the, the good and the bad and everything that goes along with it. So there's a lot to learn for kids on a farm just by seeing the, the life cycle, you know, raising a chicken and then it gets old and then it dies, you know, and in that time that chicken lays eggs and you can hatch eggs and have babies. And you know, and the bulls and the cows. And, I mean, it all, it all just, it really is great for kids. Um, so I always, you know, say, hey, get a farm, get a milk cow. Um, but I like milk cows. Uh, so yeah, that's this video. So it's all full circle. Um, I just wanted to make this little video to clarify that we're not just crazy animal hoarders that had these animals for no reason. Um, actually, there is a purpose to every single life on this farm. And we value them and we're grateful for them.